Conference Record has joined the conference. All right, cool. All right, Andy. Thank All right. Your patience, man. Uh, this is Mike Moran from Grateful Web, and I'm here with Andy Falco, the newest member of the infamous String Dusters, uh, who's on the road right now, but is taking some time to uh, chat with us for a couple minutes. And, Andy, we really appreciate that. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. How you doing? I'm doing really super, uh, in fact. Where, where, where are you in the midst of right now? You guys are on tour right now or what? Actually, we're just about to. Uh, we've been we've been off for a little while, so I came up here to New York to do. I'm doing some other stuff uh, on time off, and so I'm going to to meet everybody. We're about to do some shows uh, around, uh, I guess, Bristol and Boone, and then uh, we're going to be going in to to complete our uh, next studio album in Asheville. Actually, what, what's the ETA on that? I think it's going to be out this spring. Um, oh, that's actually, and. Yeah, and it'll be our first, uh, or actually, it'll be our first studio release on our uh, on our new label, High Country Records. So we're really excited that, uh, about that. You guys were with Sugar Sugar Hill before that, is that right? That's that's correct, and um, and uh, you know now we've 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 kind of branched off onto our own and uh, and and entering uh, a new era for us. So we're really excited. Is this record company your own uh, internal house record company or what? Yes, it sure is. It sure is. Well, we'll be able to neat. sort of kind of take take control of our own uh, destiny, so to speak. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really exciting. I, it sounds like you guys actually have a lot of upcoming cool stuff. I think this Friday, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you have your your guys are spinning some tracks um, for your. What do you guys have here? Some kind something about a turntable event going on. Yeah, I think what it is is we we're gonna kind of get in a room. And I think we'll be available to chat and uh, and we get to sort of play DJ for a little while. And, and you know, it, I think it's gonna be sort of uh, we're gonna make it sort of a room, sort of a chat room. That's I think the theme is gonna be uh, the Festi experience, which is our own uh, music festival that we have just outside of Charlottesville, Virginia. Uh, that'll be um, Columbus Day weekend in October. Uh, I think that's the October 7th, 8th, and 9th, or somewhere in there, whatever that weekend is, Columbus Day weekend. And we are, uh, you know, going to spin tunes and, and be there to chat. It's going to be kind of fun, actually. <laughs> so you guys are going to take requests from, from folks who log in and, and basically uh, whatever they're requesting, you guys are going to start you'll start spinning? Yeah, I think we're going to do uh, – or, or I think we might just choose some stuff on our own, some things that maybe influenced us or – so maybe some bands that we're excited about, maybe bands that, that are going to be on the festi and give people a taste of of, of uh, some of what they're doing. And, and, yeah, maybe do some requests, too. If people want to hear some stuff, why not? Nice. Yeah, that sounds pretty exciting. What what, what was who, – whose idea was this? Did you guys come up with this originally or what? I didn't, you know, to be honest with you, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> was this uh, – I, I, I don't really know. I, I uh, It was kind of just brought to my attention uh, – you know, and they said, you know, well, you guys want to try to do this, and we were just kind of like, yeah, that sounds like a good time. It's sort of like, you know, it's, you know, with the internet, these chat rooms and that kind of thing, it's sort of like having a listening party with your buddies, you know, but you can include everybody. So why not, you know, just get to hang Very out? Cool. Sure. What? What? Um. What? How did you guys come up with Charlottesville for the venue location for the Festi experience? Because you guys are based out of Tennessee, correct? Yeah, well, we're, we're, we're kind of based in Nashville, but we sort of all live all over the place now. You know, there, there are two of us. Uh, I live in Charlottesville, Virginia now, as does, uh, you know, Pandolfi, and, and also our, our offices, our management offices, the Artist Farm, they're all there. And, you know, we, we spent some time in, in uh, Charlottesville, and we had actually done a, done a, a on, the, on the grounds where, Devil's Backbone, where the, on the grounds where the, uh, where the festival actually is, is there in Nelson County. We had done a uh, a smaller sort of uh, like a, a beer festival or something over there a couple of years ago, and we just loved the site. We just thought it was mm-hmm. amazing, beautiful area, and and I think that was sort of like right around the time where we were kind of getting to thinking, you know, you know, a lot of our conversations and ideas start where you know we spend a lot of time together on the road, and and a lot of our conversations start something you know with with the words. Hey man, wouldn't it be sick if dot dot dot? And sure. uh, sometimes it could be like, hey, wouldn't it be sick if we could just 
tour in a UFO and have the stage all set up. And, you know, sometimes it's a little bit more uh, more abstract. But, but, you know, sometimes they're great ideas. And we, we had a conversation back then, you know, hey, wouldn't it be sick just to have our own festival? We do so many right, right. different mm-hmm. festivals all over the place. And, you know, usually when a band leaves a festival, you're thinking, oh, man, you know, that was really cool how they did this. Or, you know, oh, I didn't like so much how they had this. And so it's kind of like doing your own research of all kinds of festivals. And so we were in a position where we could uh, get with, with, with some partners and, and actually create a festival that that we can sort of take the what we think is the best sort of elements of all these different festivals and create sure. our own festival. Mm-hmm. And, That's awesome. Um, yeah, and, and you know, it, it, you know it, 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 there's, there's a green element to it. You know, which is important to us. There's mm-hmm. uh, there's out there's outdoor lifestyle elements to it. Like for example, there's a there's a bike race, there's a run um, right there on the grounds that we that we host. And there's a uh, you know, of course, the music. You know, that goes without sure. saying. But you know, it's it's the kind of place where you can go and you can rage, you know, and party and have a great time. But you can also bring your kids. You know, there's stuff for kids right. there. So it's mm-hmm. sort of a festival for everybody where it's just a really it's a really good time. We did our first one last year, and it was it, it was great. It was two days this year. It's going to be three days of music. Um, and, you know, we're just really excited about the festival. Yeah, no, it's very cool. My, uh, we'll have one, we'll have one of our writers. Her name's Gina. She'll be at this year's uh, Festi experience. In fact, she was there last year, but this year she'll be covering it for you know, taking photos and writing up a review. I'm um, just actually awesome. just checking out the lineup of some of the folks that are on there right now. You have David Grisman come into town, uh, Emmett Nershi, yeah, Jim Lauderdale, uh, Brett Denon, it, Carl Anderson. Looks like a pretty r- railroad earth, rubble bucket. So it looks even pretty diverse in terms of some of the folks that are that are joining the joining the festivities. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we love all kinds of music, and and you know we are, you know, we ourselves each each band member. You know, we all come from playing all different kinds of. Of, of music, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. I come from an electric background, you know, I mean, I grew up, my, my, like, you know, a big part of my musical influences is when I was a kid, my older brother taking me to all the dead shows all over the place, right. you know, just, mm-hmm. you know. How old were you when, when he was taking you? Oh, I was, uh, shoot, I was like 14 years old, and, you know, I, I got to see a lot of shows with Brent Midland, and, you know, of course, right. you know, later ones, and, uh, you know, I mean, that was like, and, and and that for me personally, I mean, that's where I draw a lot of my live music experience. It comes because I'm just you know just a deadhead, you know. Mm-hmm. And I, I I like to try to to bring you know we all do you know we have to try to bring a little bit of uh, of that of that element as far as the vibe sort of the way that they were you know able to create an experience for their concerts. Mm-hmm. I mean, their shows were it wasn't just the music was great and all that, but it was also just the whole experience was was, was important. I think. You know, for us, it's, it's it's all about creating experience for people, whether it be at a at a live club show or at our own festival. You know, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's about creating a, a, an awesome experience. The whole thing, you know, you take it all in, and, and uh, that's really important to us. So, when I when I was a kid growing up in college, you know, that was in the late '80s and early '90s. Um, there, you know, the Grateful Dead shows. There weren't really Bonnaroo and outside lands and all these and langarado and all these festivals that that exist now even though i don't believe langarado is going to happen this year but nonetheless there's just you know festival galore it's just constant so it, but when i was a kid the, the grateful dead shows in the summertime each show was essentially a festival because there were 50 60 70 thousand people there for two or three nights camping at, at you know even though it was a football stadium the football stadium outside of buffalo was was 50 thousand campers so it was it was a, essentially a makeshift festival Every every single time the Grateful Dead played, and I think you know that I'm glad that in 2011, and and obviously in the last you know 16 years since the Dead haven't been around, that that, that the festivals did start happening and coming up more frequently. Because back then I think there was you know they're far few and far between. Lollapalooza was one I can think of, but they weren't sure. they weren't in, in the plethora that there is now. And and you know I just it's a good experience for for college kids or for high school kids or for whatever kids in their 20s going out and spending a three day weekend camping and seeing music all weekend. I mean, it's a blast, you know, and I'm, 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 I'm thankful that, that, that vibe, that, that interest still exists, you know, 16 years later, albeit, you know, changed in terms of it's not focusing on one band naturally, but, but, um, but yeah. still the, the whole festival experience is, is for summertime in your college. I mean, it's as fun as it gets, in my opinion. I, I agree. I mean, I'm from New York and I, I mean, I used to go, I mean, they're grateful then they used to come to, they do like nine nights at the car. You know? That's right, crazy. And so you know, you you look forward to these times because you know, 
you would just view it like, you know, you just go and hang out. You'd, you'd, you'd go and you'd see old buddies that, you you know, maybe some folks from Cali came in. Yeah, you know, you go right. and hang out. Just yep. sort of chill and just, you know, night after night, you had the shows. And, of course, they've, all the shows were always different. And, you know, each night, you know, some some nights were stronger than others, you know. And sure. It was just this whole, you know, it's a whole experience. And for, for, for me, too, I mean, I remember going to a dead show. You know, and, and it's all part of it, and it's something that we're start, starting to kind of realize is that, you know, for our own shows, is, you know, like, I, it was like the whole thing. I'd be sitting in school thinking about, wow, I'm going to go to the dead show tonight. I'm imagining, like, I, I know what it's going to, you know, I, I'm imagining the experience. Like, it's mm-hmm. almost like when you're going to go to your favorite restaurant, you start to think about it. Right. You, yeah. you can, taste, you can kind of taste your favorite dish before you <laughs> get there, you know. You, you're kind of like, oh, man, I wonder what they're going to play tonight, but, you know, you're looking forward to like, oh yeah, I can't wait to see like the, the rig. You know where Jerry is going to be standing. You know where Bill yeah, is going to yeah. be standing. You know, you know the whole you were you were psyched to see you know Brent Hammond and all his, mm-hmm. his keyboard rig. And, and you know like that to me is is as enjoyable of an experience as the show itself. You know that whole right. I agree. whole yeah. thing. And, and, and I think that uh, you know we're 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 kind of trying to do a similar thing with our shows. You know, um, in our own way, of course. You know, but just sort of trying to create a consistent fun experience from 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 the whole thing you know from the vibe of the room to everything you know and that's mm-hmm. that's 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 what it's all about you know and you can share this beautiful moment with an audience you know and we're mm-hmm. all there together just having a good time lovely are you guys going to have an opportunity do you, do you foresee getting getting out and just hanging out with some of the festival goers at the festival experience i mean going out and i'm sure they're obviously going to recognize you i'm sure it'd be a thrill if you guys got a chance to you know, spend some time outside just kind of carousing the crowd. Oh man, we we are there all the whole weekend. I mean, this is like this is this is you know, this is our party, you know, and, and mm-hmm. you know, everybody there is like our guests, you know. So we're we're all there hanging out, cruising around, sitting in with other bands, walking the campgrounds, you know, a lot of the a lot of the band actually will will be camping themselves, mm-hmm. you know, just awesome. actually out in the campground hanging out. Right, you know, right. That's very cool. We're, we we love that stuff, you know. Totally. So, yeah. Andy, let me ask you a question. I'm I'm on your website right now, on the band's website, on your own, on Andy Falco's page, and one of the comments kind of struck me. Um, I was just it's sort of kind of not really we're changing direction slightly. Um, I'm just going to read it verbatim here, essentially. Congra- congratulations on a mind-bending set last night at Red, Ro- Red Rocks. You all blew off the doors off the place. In my opinion, you should have been the headliners, as you clearly own the night. In the world of entertainment, especially music, there's reality and then there's hype. You guys are the real deal, whereas Yonder is mostly hype. You proved last night that musically you're a far superior band, collectively and individually. Keep doing what you're doing, and you all just might reach the mu- musical prowess of Bill Monroe and the Bluegrass Boys, and the technical proficiency of the traveling McCurries, while Yonder Mountain is relegated to the blue, bluegrass equivalent of Lady, Lady Gaga. So my question is, um, bluegrass or Yonder tends to get a lot of slack for I think their their version of, of bluegrass. I mean, obviously it's not traditional bluegrass as much as maybe in the sense that you guys are doing it. But what what do you what do you th- what do you think about that comment? It's main comment on your on your site, not not specifically toward Yonder. But more along the lines of how bluegrass has has gone from the traditional Bill Monroe bluegrass to to you know what Yonder's doing or what Bell Fleck did when he plugged in and started playing the bluegrass infused music with the Fleck tones. But obviously the Bell Fleck and the Fleck tones is far from just traditional bluegrass. But obviously his bluegrass background was a big influence. And then you know obviously the same we can talk about Jerry. I mean Jerry picked up. You know, he picked he was picking a banjo far before, long before he picked up the electric guitar. And his banjo picking is obviously you can hear it super well in his guitar because it's a twangy guitar. I mean, but my question is, what do you think about how would would Bill Monroe be turning over in his grave? I guess is the question right now. If you were to listen to uh, Yonder Mountain, seeing them filling up Red Rocks, Bill Monroe would have would have cried because I stood when when Yonder was playing. I stood all the way at the top, and I sat there and watched 10,000 people dancing and raging. And down at the on the stage is is a four-piece bluegrass band melting their faces. And Bill Monroe would have been damn proud of what they're doing because Bill Monroe, you got to remember something. See, this is the thing that Bill Monroe created a genre of music, bluegrass. Okay, 
he and what he did is he took all these different elements of stuff that he took and he created this new thing. He was Bill Monroe was cutting edge. He was doing new stuff. He didn't want people to copy what he was doing. He was doing his thing. And so in the spirit of Bill Monroe, it would be a shame to try to do it the way he did it because that's not what he would do. He wasn't looking back. What if Bill Monroe just played the you know the old fiddle tunes the way he had heard them? There would be mm -hmm. it, it wouldn't have been Bill Monroe anymore. So right. I think Bill Monroe would have been damn proud with a tear in his eye watching yonder rage ten thousand people at a beautiful red venue like like Red Rocks and and I you know that's how I feel about it. I think that the music has to move forward and you know you can you can you can like this band better than that band and all that stuff. It's all so subjective, but you know I mean. <laughs> What, when it comes well, down to it, you I mean, know, the, music, the, music, like the music should be different. They shouldn't be doing it the way anybody. They're too, they, you know, Yonder does the music their way, and it's badass, you know. And, and, mm -hmm. and you know, like, you know, who can say, you know, whatever. And, and you know, whatever. We, you know, we, we're all different bands, you know. We're all of us do our – we try to do our own thing, you know. We try to have our own sounds, and, and uh, you know, that's, that's what I mean, they do. I mean, Boston – I, in my my in fact, we've interviewed Jeff. In 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 my estimation, he he would say Bill Monroe in his first three or four names, if not the first name, in terms of musical influences. I mean, that's obvious, and the same is true for Garcia. I mean, you know the, that there these guys these guys both were were influenced by traditional bluegrass and Bill Monroe, but 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 then they took their their experiences and 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 and. Changed, I mean, made their own music, which I, I, I personally, obviously, am a big fan of. I, I'm just, I, the reason I bring it up is just because the, this traditionalist, in my view, is made, you know, stating this on your website. I thought it was pretty interesting, and I think it's, I think that, that he's not alone. I think I've heard the, the arguments before from other folks that, you know, just particularly to yonder, they, they seem to kind of get the brunt of it. But you know, I was just kind of yeah. curious on your, on your, on your, uh, your take on that. So. Yeah, and they're always going to get the, you know, they're, the Yonder's a very successful band. They do really well. They have a lot of fans. And so, of course, they're going to be the target of a lot of criticism, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Look, man, you know, I, when I used to play more traditional bluegrass, you know, people would, you know, people in that world a lot of time would talk about how, how the Grateful Dead sucks and how, how Jerry sucks and he's a terrible banjo player and all this stuff. I mean, you know... <laughs> Like you know, old you know they they turn their no their noses up at Old and in the Way. I mean, Old in the Way mm -hmm. I think is one of the top selling bluegrass albums ever. So I think so. And, think and it's a great right, record, yeah. and it influenced mm -hmm. all kinds of people, myself included. So that was my first know, bluegrass album I've ever listened to. That's for sure. I mean, I grew up too. a Jersey I mean, kid. I didn't know what bluegrass you know. was if it wasn't for Jerry. You know, I mean, the Grateful mm -hmm. Dead and what they were doing. You hear the same thing about Fish. Oh, you know, the traditionalists will always sort of turn their noses up at at stuff like that when it's not done in the way that they think it should be done, but these are all bands that are that we all know are great bands that are that are that, right. that that are original bands that are doing their own thing and they're not they're not trying to do what Bill Monroe did. They're not trying mm -hmm. to do what, you know, Flat and Scrubs did. It's just it's it just happens to be, you know, a big a big influence in what they do. Just like I mean, we're the same way. I mean, you know, that music is 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 a big, you know, we we're we're a string band, you know, mm -hmm. and and and, mm -hmm. and bluegrass for 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 our band is sort of the common denominator from everybody. But you know, Andy Hall used to be like a heavy metal shredder, you know, and mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I used to play, you know, a lot of blues and 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 electric. I can't, I come from an electric guitar background and and that kind of mm -hmm. thing, and you know, I you know, I can go on, but like, you know, we all come from different sort of things, but bluegrass is sort of the common denominator, so we're a string band that we bring all these other influences in because because that's sort of like your musical DNA. I, I look at that as, as individual musicians and as a band. Your musical DNA is sort of taking all the stuff that you heard all through your life, you know, and and it, and it should come out in your in the music, you know? Mm -hmm. There are times where Andy Hall is ripping a solo, and it could be it's rocking like a, like, like a shred solo, you know? Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I, this stuff comes out. You know, I, I'll play a lot of bluesy stuff, you know, mm -hmm. you know, licks and stuff in my things. Or I'll play, like, you know, like he stuff influenced by Hendrix in my playing, right. you know. And, I mean, mm -hmm. that's all part of me as a player and, and what my personal sound is, you know. And right. and as a band, and bands do the same thing. As a group, then all that stuff sort of gets in there. And that what, that's what makes a certain band sound like that band and not like mm -hmm. somebody else, you know. Mm -hmm. I heard, so there's um, a difference Joe, between like a preservation of a music, 
You know, you can preserve a music. You can, you know, you can you can have a and there's, and and I love traditional bluegrass as much as anybody. You know, but you know, there's one thing to sort of you know those records exist, and you can even have a band that that wants to do that sort of thing, and that's that's fine. But I don't understand why people get so upset when when people try to try to do other things with it. You're not trying to mm -hmm. change the music. You're just playing what's true to yourself. You know. Right. Yeah. No, I agree with you 100. percent I, I I totally do. I mean, I, you know, I just uh, it's just a it's a it's a theme that I've heard throughout the. You know, just like you sort of referenced it just a few moments ago, especially with the Grateful Dead and Fish. I mean, they're, they're you know, old school deadheads are are real, sometimes abrasive toward Fish, and 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 just you know, I mean, Fish is. I'm sure most of them will say would say the Dead are the big one of their biggest influences. But but, um, you know, there, there's a lot of traditional deadheads that are old school deadheads that that just won't won't take the Fish, and you know, even in spite of the fact that that Fish goes out and does what the Grateful Dead did in the sense that they jam, that they, they improv, that they, 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 they try. I mean, one night not, may not be so great, but the next night may be, and that's why you're going to go a few times because you're, you, you want to go to when you get a good show. But, I mean, you know, the, the, I definitely hear that, that sort of rumbling in, in the jam community with Fish and the Grateful Dead, and I hear it with Yonder and, and, and you know, from some traditional blue, traditionalists in the bluegrass world. Sure, so I'm just sure. curious to kind of get your take and everybody's take on that because I, 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 I'm in a, I totally agree with you. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm 40 years old, so I, I kind of got toward the – I got to see the end of the Grateful Dead and the early part of Fish. So I'm, I'm – yeah. I love both bands. I mean, I've definitely – you know, I I love both bands, but I I I I've, I've heard the rumblings from from both sides. You know, that's oh sure. yeah, you, you know, you always, there's always rumblings going on, and really what it comes down to is like, what's the experience for you? I mean, to me, it's like if you don't like fish and you like the Grateful Dead, well, you can't really go see the Grateful Dead anymore. But right. back then, anyway, it's like if if you don't like fish, I mean, I was a deadhead. I it took me you know a long time to get into fish just because uh, you know it's a different band. I mean, and and mm -hmm. I think Fish is a great band. I don't really know their music all that well. I didn't, I never, I think I saw them once when they were opening for Santana years ago. But mm -hmm. I, you know, I've heard a lot of stuff, I mean, where it like blows my mind. I mean, those guys are, those guys are a sick band. I mean, you know, but if they're a different band than the Grateful Dead, you know, I was, sure. I was dead and I was going to dead shows, you know, that's what I was into. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. you, you pick and choose what you, what you want to go see. I mean, it's that way with anything, you know. I mean, right, right. Well, that's go, one of the beauties of the, the festivals now. You can go see now. the Travis McCurries and not go to the Yonder show if that's what you're right. into, or, or vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and, 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 you know, in 2011, in the last few years with all our festivals, that is actually one of the, the nice things about the festivals is that you can pick and choose, you know, if I'm interested in this genre or not or whatever, and I'll, I'll just skip this. I'll hit to stage number two and go see that show or whatever. So that kind of gives the, the folks nowadays – that that luxury of kind of pick and choosing, you know, amongst a bunch of different bands playing, which is sort of nice. So. Yeah, my, my, I think I think I would encourage people always, you know, if you're at a festival, you know, pick and choose. But you know what? Go Try something good. Go outside of your your comfort zone. Yeah, because you know, I, I I mean, listen, I remember when I was a kid, and you know, I grew up, you know, I'm like an '80s kid, you know, I kind of grew right. up in the '80s and. Um, I remember, I mean, I was like, you know, my brother was getting me into all this really hip music. I was into the Grateful Dead. I was into Hendrix. I was into all that kind of stuff, you know. And to me, pop music, because you know how it is, you know, especially like in that scene, it was always like uh, pop music sucks, you know, all this crappy music. is right, terrible, right. you know. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I hated everything, you know, that was pop just because I was, it's almost like you're brainwashed. You're like, no, 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 mm -hmm. I'm I, I don't want to hear that. That's terrible stuff. Well, you know, a few years ago, maybe like five, six years ago, I put in, like, Michael Jackson's Thriller, which was, like, you know, to me back then, like, oh, that's just horrible, horrible music. That's one of the greatest albums ever made, you know? Like, once you open your mind and you no longer have all this, like, stuff that you're supposed to like this and you're supposed to like that, you know, open your mind a little bit. I mean, our band, we love, people would be surprised to hear that. I mean, you know, we love everything from, like, sequence music, hard rock to... The bluegrass. I mean, our band, you know, is always there's all kinds of music playing in there. I mean, so Van Halen rocks on, uh, on 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 Thriller. I mean, Eddie Van Halen friggin' tears it up. I know, and, and I mean, it's like yeah. Pr I mean, you know, produced by Quincy Jones. I mean, it's a, it's it's a masterpiece, you know. Yeah. But you know, I, it sounded like '80s music to me, and so at the time, you know, it sounded like pop music. I I, I didn't I didn't give it a chance, you know. So 
you'd be surprised at stuff when you actually give it a chance. And, mm-hmm. and, and not only give it a chance, like not, not go watch something thinking, I'm going to hate this. Because you know what? If, if you do that, you're going to hate it, you know? Right. But go and be like, let, let me see. Let me try to find some good things in this. And, and, you know, you'll find a lot of times when there are bands that a lot of people are talking about, a lot of times, a lot of times there's a reason for that, you know? Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. And, and you go and you can be like, man, you know? That was pretty sweet. You know, maybe I don't like the guy. I don't like the way that guy sings or, or I don't like, you know, this about it. But you know what? This was really cool. And those guys rocked out. And you, you know, take in the experiences. Check out stuff when you can because, you know, we're only on this planet for a really short time, you know. Yeah. Life's too yeah. short to, you know, you might as well experience it all. And then, and then you know, you have, mm-hmm. you have it all. You remember it, you know, forever. Totally. Andy, man, you're you sound cool. I, I really appreciate you you chatting with us. You you, you and yeah, I man, sound you. like we're uh, come from similar time time frames or uh, growing up. I mean, I'm I'm yeah. a 80s kid myself, so I'm I'm pretty similar. Um, yeah. Anyway, hey yeah, man, man, listen, we really appreciate it. We're looking forward to the Festy experience. Like I said, we'll have a writer there, so we'll definitely be there covering it thoroughly. And um, and this this weekend, the 16th, you guys are going to have your your little uh, chat with folks where uh, folks can. Uh, do some requests. You're going to do, spin some tunes or some of the bands playing at the Festi Experience over Columbus Day weekend. So hopefully folks will come check that out. And, yeah, um, that's right. And so we, have, we have the uh, website for the Festi. is thefesty.com, which is S as in Frank, E-S-T-Y, thefesty.com. Check it out. You know, the browse through it. You know, there's pictures, there's videos there. It's a good time. Awesome. All right, Andy, we'll do that. And uh, thanks again for your time. And um, we will Thank talk you. to you soon. And to take care of yourself. You too, Mike. Thanks so much, bro. Bye bye. Bye bye. This call is no longer being recorded.